Chapter 9 Burn Me Out Friday arrived, bringing the first round of the Benjiro Senior School Biannual Fighting Tournament. It was quite a popular event. Over 90% of the school's students piled into the gym in order to watch the fights. Even though it was merely a tournament to allocate the winner as the representative of their school, Benjiro's students seemed to really enjoy the fighting. Zane, Yulia, and Nirav sat in the back row, elevated enough to see all the fights. Several bouts took place within the square ring. The rules required one competitor to force the other out of the elevated ring onto the ground. Flying was illegal, but opponents were permitted to use their powers specific to their race. All fights which took place so far were fairly one-sided. Not many impressive examples of powers had been displayed, which disappointed Zane. Many teachers also sat amongst the crowd, but the principal was noticeably absent. This intrigued Zane. He thought after the comment made in his letter, Lyof would make himself present. What an excellent bout! It is time for the final match of the evening. A teacher in the ring held a microphone. Zane cocked his head. He hadn't fought yet, and neither had Barrett. This made him think the last bout had to be contested between the two, ending their wager almost immediately. Introducing first the demon Zane. Zane stood and was wished luck by Yulia and Nira. He walked down the steps to reach the ring and jumped up. Applause followed the whole way. He looked around for Barrett in the crowd and eventually found him, sitting and smoking with his arms crossed. Get ready, werewolf. Time to get burnt. And his opponent, the shape stealer Wyatt. Wait. Shape still. A tall, slim boy who was slightly older than Zane entered the ring after a few seconds to a huge applause. The boy posed for the crowd, raising his arms and smirking. After showing off, Wyatt faced his opponent and offered a handshake. Zane reluctantly accepted, and the opponents took to their corners. Although confused about the circumstances of their fight, considering Barrett had yet to compete, Zane was still prepared for any opposition. Shapesteels can turn their skin into any non-life surface surrounding them, so long as they are holding the item. Considering this ring is made out of cloth, plastic and wood, he will be very disadvantaged during this fight. The two didn't need to utter a single word. They were fully aware their fighting would speak for them. Zane stood with his right foot and fist forward, a typical martial arts stance common amongst a variety of fighters. The style of fighting he was equipped with was taught throughout the kingdoms, but Zane using it along with his pyrokinesis allowed him to reach an advanced level of skill. Wyatt wasn't familiar with any fighting style, but held his fists up to protect his face in the same style of a boxer. Zane and Wyatt stood in their corners, not taking an eye off each other until the bell rang, indicating the start of the match. Slowly the two started walking towards each other, neither losing their stance as they did so. Zane watched Wyatt. He seemed unprepared unsure of what was to come. Zane decided to give him some of the best opening strikes he could give. He faked a punch to misdirect Wyatt, and, in as quick as a flash, Zane performed an accurate roundhouse kick, connecting with Wyatt's jaw. As Wyatt began to stumble, Zane followed up with a kick to the ribcage from his other foot. Zane struck continuous kicks on each side of Wyatt's body, forcing Wyatt to remain standing. 
The other boy finally gained the wherewithal to bring his arms down to block as many kicks as he could. Recognising the blocks, Zane lunged forward with a palm heel strike to Wyatt's face, once more knocking him off balance. Wyatt stumbled backwards, one hand to his nose and the other to his winded torso. Zane stepped forward again and wrapped his hands around the back of Wyatt's head. Zane thrust wicked knee shots into Wyatt's ribs, sending pain exploding into Wyatt's midsection. Wyatt's breathing became laboured, his ribs burning with pain, some possibly broken. Zane let him go and Wyatt sluggishly swung a hook punch, which Zane easily evaded. Wyatt tripped forward when his punch missed, but he sprang off his back foot to thrust his shoulder directly into Zane's jaw, catching him by surprise and staggering him. Zane rubbed his jaw and glanced at Wyatt. He noticed the lack of a follow-up attack and took his time to mock. <laughs> Lucky hit. <laughs> well, it's obvious you've done this before. The only thing you've proven to me is that you can take a beating and remain standing. So what are you capable of with your powers? Wyatt slung his head down, still in tremendous pain. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a stone. He raised it until it was the height of his head. So, he brought insurance. Good. Now let's see the power of a shape stealer. Within a blink of an eye, Wyatt's entire body turned from skin to rock. With this, he gained a newfound composure, standing straight, face no longer lined with pain. <sighs> Much better. Wyatt dashed forward and threw his nearly heavy fists with accuracy, but little speed. Zane was able to dodge, bob and weave from every punch, but the consistency of the attacks forced him to back off, step by step, closer to the edge of the ring. To try and counteract this, Zane waited until the right time to throw a left-handed uppercut at Wyatt's jaw. Upon contact, the stone barely flinched, but a few of Zane's knuckles cracked. Ah, uh, uh, fuck! Wyatt thrust forward and struck Zane with a wicked headbutt, bruising Zane's skull and nearly tipping him off the edge of the ring. Only just able to avoid falling, Zane watched for Wyatt's next strike. As a lunging front kick came his way, Zane spun out of the way and Commando rolled away from his opponent. His movements were sloppy due to the ringing in his head, but it took him out of harm's way. As Zane returned to his feet, Wyatt turned around and stared down his agile opponent. Hard to hurt me, isn't it? I think you'll find that none of your strikes will do much good. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Zane laughed. Now that most of the knuckles in his left fist were broken, he needed another plan of attack. Despite a slightly blurry vision from the headbutt, Zane composed himself. It's time for me to use my own powers. Zane raised his right fist and encased it with flames. No punch could harm Wyatt, but fire was different. He shot a ball of fire at Wyatt, who couldn't avoid it due to his weight. The flames struck Wyatt and he staggered backwards. He clumsily held his arms up in an attempt to block it. With one hand, Zane continued to shoot fireballs in Wyatt's direction with his opponent blocking several of the shots. However, the fire eventually reached his face, blinding him. Wyatt couldn't handle his eyes being burned. He held his hands to his face and screeched in agony. Seeing an opening, Zane ran towards his opponent and jumped into the air, landing a flying drop kick at Wyatt's chest, forcing both to the ground, simultaneously striking the ring hard. Despite how close he was to the edge of the ring, Wyatt didn't fall out. 
Zane was surprised at this. Wyatt must have leaned sideways when he got struck, so he could absorb the hit and fall to his side. Regardless of his lack of fighting capability, he has the awareness to avoid the outside of the ring. Zane's left hand was still injured seriously, but he was able to make his way to his feet. Wyatt did the same, but surprisingly, his stone skin disappeared. His normal flesh tone returned, a small amount of blood spilled from his mouth from where Zayn kicked him at the start of the bout. Regardless of his pain, Wyatt chuckled. Ah, very, very good, demon. Got any other special tricks up your sleeve? Or rather, in your pockets? To your benefit, no. But maybe this will pique your interest. Suddenly, Wyatt ran towards Zane in a final attempt to knock him off balance. By accident, both fighters forgot the stone in Wyatt's hand, which was sharp as a knife. While colliding with Zane, Wyatt accidentally pierced Zane's right shoulder, leaving the stone in his arm. Pure instinct had Zane sidestep to avoid full collision. Wyatt's own momentum carried him away, but the damage had been done. Ah, son of a... He cut himself off by pulling out the stone, scowling and watching the blood gush from his shoulder and stain his jacket. Zane gripped the stone in his injured hand. The pain in his shoulder was worse than his knuckles. He dropped the stone, looking up at his opponent, who had only barely remained on his feet, standing in the corner Zane began in. He's most likely got a few bruised or broken ribs from my kicks. Both of us probably share a concussion. Although, he's essentially broken my left hand and wounded my right shoulder. But, the ball's in my court now. Wyatt raised his fists up once more. Since that didn't work, come on. This is all I got. How does he expect to win this without his powers? Is this really fair, Wyatt? <sighs> no, just finish it. In fairness, Zane raised his fists as well, mimicking Wyatt's stance. Regardless of the pain in his ribs, and how difficult it was to hold. Wyatt kept his hands up and ready. As did Zane, who found the pain nearly preventing him from holding his fists up. He moved closer to his opponent. Wyatt remained still, staggering slightly but remained standing. Zane kept approaching, but the shape stealer didn't back down. Deciding to end the fight, Zane dashed forward leaped into the air and directed a fly kick at Wyatt's chest. Regardless of Wyatt's forearm block, the force of the kick sent him out of the ring and onto the ground below. With another bell ring, the match was over. And your winner, Zane.